Hello everyone, I'm Natalia and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use Clockify and how to set everything up to start you off so that you can easily start tracking your time. There'll be links in the description to more in-depth videos about each part so make sure to check those out too. Today we're going to go over the major and most important parts of Clockify such as the team section, roles and groups, the workspace, client section, projects, the different ways to track your time in the time tracker, calendar view, dashboard, and reports. So what you see here on my screen is Clockify and hopefully this will help you and your team organize yourselves and your projects and clients much better. So the version that you're currently seeing on my screen right now is the full feature version. And keep in mind, we also have a mobile app, a desktop app, and a browser extension from Mozilla and Chrome. To start setting up your workspace, you're going to want to head over to this section right here on the left, the team section. Once you click on this area here, it will open up the entire team section and you'll be able to see a lot of options. Now to start, you want to head over to this area right here. It says add new member and you want to go ahead and click on it and first invite a user or should I say add a new team member. You can add one team member at a time or just use a comma between the emails. They will get an invitation individually to join Clockify if they're not already members and to join your workspace. Within the team section, if you scroll down, once you've invited all of the users and team members you'd like to join your workspace, you'll be able to assign different roles to users. Now, before we get into the roles that you can assign to different users, it's useful to know that the highest role is the workspace owner and the admin. So those two roles can see or edit the entire workspace and you can only have one owner, but multiple admins, but they basically can do the same. The only difference between the workspace owner and the admin is that the workspace owner can delete the whole workspace and add and remove admins. To change somebody's role, scroll right over to this part here and click the little plus sign right here. Before you do that, you'll probably see it just says role next to the user's name and email address. And that just means that that person is a regular user. If you don't want them to be a regular user, once you click on that little plus button, that little plus sign, um, you'll be able to assign them different roles. Project managers can see and edit all on their project. So any project that they've been assigned, they'll be able to see and edit their projects. And there can be more than one manager on a project. There's also a team manager. So a team manager can see all their users time in reports and they can also approve their users timesheets and see reports and pages. So once you've invited all of your users and you've slowly started to set up your workspace and you've started assigning all of your team members specific roles that you'd like them to have, the next interesting setting is in the groups tab. Now, once you click on the groups tab, you'll see um, that you can add new user groups. So groups can be specific departments. You can add specific team members to groups. Multiple groups can belong to multiple projects and you can have as many groups as you want. To create a user group, all you have to do is click right here, give the group a name and go ahead and click add. Once you've created the user group, you're going to have to go ahead and scroll down a little bit and click on the plus access sign. Once you click on that, you'll get a drop down menu of all of the team members and all of the users. So you'll be able to add all of the users that you'd like to be able to have access to this group. So now that I talked a little bit about the different roles and the admins and workspace owners, your workspace is basically your hub for using Clockify. When you first create a Clockify account, you automatically get a workspace and a workspace contains all of your time entries, projects, teams, and settings. With a single Clockify account, you can create or join multiple workspaces. These workspaces you belong to are their own separate entities, each with their own unique set of users, projects, and time entries. Everything in Clockify is tied to a specific workspace, so time entries you made in one workspace aren't visible in another. 
Only admins of a workspace can see and edit workspace settings. In the workspace settings, you can enable timesheets, upload your company's logo, change the workspace's name, set workspace billable rate and currency, control who can see billable rates and amounts, set if projects are billable by default, choose how you want to group your projects, set who can create projects, tasks, clients and tags, choose if the duration format will be displayed as hours and minutes or hours, minutes and seconds, enable project favorites, manage extra features. It's also good to know that anyone can create a new workspace by clicking on the active workspace name like this, then on the manage button, and then finally on create new workspace. So once you've set up your team and your workspace, your next step would be to set up a client. It's important to note that only owners and admins can see the client's page, but regular users can't. However, if the owner or the admin sets who can create projects and clients to everyone in the workspace settings, regular users will be able to create clients when they create a new project by typing the new client name in the client selection dropdown, even though they still won't be able to see the client's page. If you're the owner or the admin of the workspace, to create a client, go to the client's page right here. Once you click on that, you'll see this area right here. It's where you're going to enter the client's name in the add new client field and click here. If you want your regular users to be able to add clients, what you have to do is you have to set who can create projects and clients to everyone. A regular user can then go to the projects page to create a project. Click the select client and enter the client name. Click create client or press control plus enter. It's really useful to know that a client does not need to be assigned to a project. So it's really cool for internal stuff. Once you've set up your client's page and you're happy with how it looks, the next part that you're going to want to go on to to complete setting up your workspace is the project section. Keep in mind by default, only admins can create projects, but you can allow regular users to create projects and clients when you set who can create projects and clients to everyone in your workspace settings. Once you click on the projects page, you can see that at the top right corner right here, create new project button, click on that. First, you want to name the project like this. Then you're going to go ahead and select a client, one that you've probably previously made. You can also choose a project color and change visibility to public or private. Once you're happy with how your client looks, you can just click create like this. Once you've created a project, you can select it when tracking time. If you've set the project as private though, visible only to a certain group, then only people who are on the project will be able to select it when tracking time. Once you've created your project, so you can add individual team members or groups or departments. Once they have been added, we can then go ahead and create different tasks. To create a task for your project, click on the project that you would like to create a task for. Once you click on that on the right corner, you'll be able to see add new task. Type in the task name and just click add. As soon as the tasks are created, they'll be assigned to anyone. So anyone who has access to the project can track time on them. If you want to specify a user that should be tracking time, just select one or multiple users that we previously added like this. In the project settings, we can change additional details. Tags can also be added by admins. As soon as those tags are created, they're going to work regardless of project or anything else. Once you've set up your project, let's go to the time tracker section. We have a couple of options to track time. We have the manual mode, the time tracker, and the time sheet. If you work on the same things day in and day out, you can just transfer your time to the next week as well. Before I get into the details about how to track your time in all of the available options, it's really important to note that there's an option to make some fields to be required fields. For example, to make users have to add time entry with a tag. These settings can be found in the workspace settings. 
to start tracking your time using the timer, enter the timer mode by clicking the clock icon in the upper right corner on the time tracker page right here. Once you do that, optionally type what you're working on in the what are you working on box like this. Optionally mark your time as billable or non-billable and select your project or task or add tags like this. You can start the timer by clicking the start button and when you finish working, stop the timer by clicking the stop button. It's good to keep in mind that once you do start the timer, it will keep running until you stop it and it will keep running even if you leave the page or close the browser. And if you want to continue a time entry, find that time entry you want to continue recording in your timesheet and click the play icon. Clockify will copy all of that information and the timer will start ticking for you. The next way to track your time is the manual way. So if you for some reason forgot to start your timer or you just prefer to fill in all your work hours on a specific day or a specific time, you can use the manual mode. So to enter the manual mode, you're going to have to click the list icon in the upper right corner on the time tracker page. Once you do that, type in what you've worked on in the what have you worked on box, just like this. As always, mark your time as billable or non-billable, select all the necessary information such as your projects or tasks, and you can also add tags here. Once you've done that, go ahead and set the start and the end time or add the time by duration like this. You can also change the date if needed like this by clicking on the calendar icon and selecting the date. Go ahead and add that entry by clicking add. In addition to these two ways of tracking your time, we also have entering your time in the timesheet. The timesheet is usually a much quicker method for adding time and it's really cool for people who are used to filling out their timesheets manually at the end of the day or the week and they need to enter a lot of data at one time. To add time this way, you're going to have to select a project or a task that you are working on like this. Go ahead and write how much you've worked on that task that day. Go ahead and add a row for each additional project or task you've worked on like this. You can also switch to a different week using the date navigation in the top right corner right here. And if you want to add more details such as tags or a description, you can hover over a cell with time right over here and just click on these three dots. The time tracker and the timesheet share your time data. So if you go ahead and add time via the time tracker, you'll see that that time is in the timesheet as well and vice versa. It's important to mention that all users can edit or delete their time as long as it hasn't been locked. You can delete time by clicking on the X right here. And if you do delete a time entry in the timesheet, it will delete all the time associated with that task for that week. So try to be careful. Once you've decided which way you want to track your time and you figured your way around using all of the available options for the time tracker, the next really cool thing is the calendar view. In the calendar, you can see all of your track time so that you can basically see how your day looks like at a glance and notice possible work patterns. You can also see if you've got any gaps in your day where you forgot to log your time. And you can see if you double book time and have overlapping entries too. Another really cool feature is that you can edit time entries directly within the calendar. To do that, Drag the start and end time edges of the time block to shorten or extend the entry like this. And you can also drag and drop the whole time block to move it to some other time slot or date like this. If you forgot to add time entirely, you can also add new time entries directly within the calendar. Click on any open time slot like this to add a time entry. 
Click and drag up or down to create a time entry for the desired time slot like this. The next part that I'm going to talk to you about is the dashboard. The dashboard will give you an overview of all the hours tracked grouped by project or by billability and you can choose the date range right here. Choose from one of the preset ones or choose any date range manually like this. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see each individual team member that's been invited and if they've clocked any time from what you've specified. Another really cool feature is that you can also see if any of your team members are currently tracking time. One of the most useful features of Clockify are the reports. Reports are where you actually really get to see and use the data from everything that we've previously talked about. There are three types of reports. The first type of report is the summary report. It shows you all the track time and breaks it down by any dimension you need. You can see time tracked each day or week and below you can also see a summary table broken down by other criteria. For example, you can group the report by user and the table will show you who tracked how much time like this. You can break down data even further by using a subgroup right here, like the date, for example. Now you can expand the user and see how much time they've tracked by date like this. If you want to see data for the whole month or any other time range, you can choose that here at the top of the reports. You can see filters, which will help you see only what you need to see like this. For example, if you want to see time for a certain client, select the client like this and then go ahead and click filter like this. Once you get all the details you need for your report, you can export it and you can also share it with the link. The next type of report is the detailed report. Now the detailed report has every single detail and it's great for backup or even a pivot table. It lists all the entries of you and your team. And if you happen to be an admin, you can correct entries by clicking on what you wish to edit, just like this, and adjust as in the time tracker. Here you can also double check by filtering entries that don't have a project, for example, like this. Now the last and final type of report is the weekly report. The weekly report shows you a weekly breakdown of your time in a classic timesheet view. It shows a summary of all the time for each day in the week, as well as the total time. You can group time entries either by project or by user like this. When you group by project, it's useful because you can see how much time you've worked for each client. And grouping by user is useful when you want to see how much time each person on your team has worked on each day. Just like any of the other previous reports, you can filter data, change the time range, share the report, print and export the results. To see who hasn't tracked any time in the given week, group the report by user like this and click on show users without time. Only admins will be able to see this option. You can also filter by approval status and see who hasn't submitted their time and didn't get approval right here. Hopefully this video helped you set up your Clockify account and your workspace. Make sure you check out our help center for additional details about everything we talked about today and our tutorials page for a more in-depth look at everything. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook.